Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. We got a special edition of the Raw Rundown this week. We have our friend Kate Casey in, who uh, is the host of Reality Life with Kate Casey. And I got, obviously, my buddy Adam. How are you guys this morning? Good. Ready for the I'm weekend. I'm good, bud. I'm good. We're doing our weekly rundown here where we try to give you the top 10 stories of the week, try to get you in and out so you know a little bit of know what's going on in pop culture and the entertainment news space uh, before you head for the weekend. And this week was... Uh, Dax, would you say this week was a good week in uh, entertainment news? This was a good week, and I, I'm going to be honest right off the top. We did not include Ben and J-Lo's wedding because I felt <laughs> like you had to be living under a rock if you didn't hear about that one. So that one is not going to be in our rundown. we got lots of other stuff for you. Um, but no, th- this week was good. I thought it was a, a fun entertainment week. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, I, th- I think it was – there was definitely <sighs> – it's funny. I was watching the SB Awards last night, and it's funny to see like all the athletes there. But I love to see like the random celebrities that go there just to promote their project. Yeah, and they oh, they, they don't even watch spilled. sports. They're, you're like, <laughs> why are they there? It's yeah, just like, they don't even know what basketball is. They go for the random like red carpet event. They're just trying to you know mm-hmm. stay relevant. Kate, what TV shows are you binging? By the way, before we get into it. So many, so many. And I watch every different category. Right this week, I love the new docuseries on Derek Jeter called The Captain on ESPN. I'm still watching that Victoria's Secret documentary on Hulu. I watched All the Real Housewives and I started watching Love Island on Peacock, which is basically like everyone's wearing the most ridiculous bathing suits. I've never seen so much vagina and penis barely covered in my entire life <laughs> okay what show is this Real, what, it's, what show it's love say? island but it's on peacock right. so love Starting island that up tonight i mean love island was on cbs <laughs> last season but now it's on peacock and because it's on peacock it's shocking because their bathing suits are so minuscule but also they curse so much it's like jarring for a second but then you're into it because it's on okay, you had cable. me at vagina out on tv I'm, and then they I'm, do close-ups don't worry they'll do close-ups <laughs> you're like wow i just kept thinking how courageous oh my god oh well, and thongs awesome. there's like full thong Again, you, you, you can stop selling it. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm going to be watching. Don't worry. All right, let's jump into this. Let's read a quick uh, review just to say thank you to someone who took five seconds out of their day to leave us a review. This one comes from Lover of Pods, the bed po- best podcast yet, five star, and then said the best yet. I'm binge listening. Love this so much. Thank you from Lover of Pods. We appreciate it. You know, we're always saying if you guys can just take the five seconds out of your day, go to iTunes, go all the way to the bottom, leave us a review. It is like money to us because we're not getting paid um, and we're not doing a Patreon or anything. So please just leave us a review. All right, let's jump into it. We got a lot to cover in the next uh, couple minutes. All right, coming in at number 10, um, Army Hammer. We haven't seen this guy for a while. He resurfaced in Los Angeles. I guess he's been staying at Robert Downey Jr.'s house um, here. But ever since his whole, like, cannibal scandal, he decided to get out of town. He, he moved to the Cayman Islands, and uh, he has been low, 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 low. And uh, Adam, did you see these photos of him? I did see the photos. And guess who took the photos, by the way? Our friend Jessel. Jessel was on the podcast, one of our favorite photographers on the street. He got the exclusive photos of uh, Army Hammer in Venice. And Army, you know, it was reported that he was selling timeshares down in the Cayman Islands. Did you see these photos or did you hear these stories Mm -hmm. about it? Yeah, yeah. Like, and I think everyone was so surprised because he comes from, like, the Arm and Hammer, like, empire but he's been totally cut off by the family after everything happened but it's good to see that he's in town because he's obviously got his estranged wife and his children here and i don't know how much time he's been spending with his children but it seems like he is in their life still which is good kate you have what you have five kids is it I have five kids, and you know I met Army Hammer's dad one time in La Quinta. I sat next to him with his girlfriend and chatted a bit, and he was very open about his, his how much he didn't like Army's wife. I mean, he just told me so much stuff, and then invited me out later to hang out with his girlfriend. And now, years later, it, it was told to me that they, they were swingers, and... Looking back, I couldn't help but laugh. My husband's like, there's no way that they were inviting you to come back because we have all these kids. I'm like, there's just no way. But I had like the best (laughs) conversation with them. His dad's really nice. I could understand why I cut him off. I don't blame him. (laughs) 
<laughs> I just like that you basically said, yeah, Army Hammer's dad invited us back for uh, some. Uh, he he was like, That's "You awesome. come back and hang out with us." And my friend's like, "Oh my god, they're swingers. They totally want to ha- ha- like sex Naked. with you." I'm like, "No, I don't think so." <laughs> Well, go check out the fit- photos. It's him in a blue shirt with his pants all rolled up like he's uh, waiting for water to come in. He's got flip-flops on. Uh, but you know what? Listen, this guy has been deep undercover, so it's interesting to see him out. I did not realize how much Robert Downey Jr. is supporting him. Uh, he's the, Robert paid for his six-month stay at the Florida Rehab, letting him live, supporting him throughout this entire scandal. It's pretty crazy. Wow. I didn't realize they were such good buddies. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to number nine. Oh, Adam, you're going to be so sad. Chelsea Handler and Joe Coy split up. I thought they were going to last. You know, Joe Coy is a super positive, nice guy. He came on our podcast and is just super fun and cool. And I don't know. They just seem like they're really much in love. Like, you did not see, based on social media, again, we're not in the relationship, but based on social media, like, they looked insanely happy. And you never saw Chelsea that happy before. She usually can be negative, but they are very into each other. And this came out of nowhere that this breakup happened. Yeah, Kate, were you following them on social media? Did you see how happy they looked all the time? Yeah, but I felt like her statement and his statement basically make it seem like they might get back together. It's like, well, you never know. I'm like, why did you even put a statement out? Because it sounds like you're going to get back together next week. Yeah, that's what it did. It sounded like... Hey, our lives are busy right now. Mm-hmm. We can't do this at the moment. She said, you know, Joy's basic, or Joe has basically revitalized her trust in, in men, and she loves him to death. That was it. And then it was like, we can't do it right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, here, oh, uh, I'm going to be cynical. Okay. Is there a chance that this is a fake breakup to promote all the things that they have going on right now? Conspiracy. No. Is it a show no, I think up? maybe maybe he, I don't know. One of them said, um, "I'm just like this is maybe too intense, and I just need a, like a little bit of space." That's what I think, and they'll probably get back together. But I don't think I don't. I think there was too much space, is what it made it sound like. Like they're both traveling, they're both working, they don't have time to spend it with each other. So we can't align our our schedule so we can't be together mm, because but I feel we like need they, promotion for our project but he has a child that's like 18 plus and she doesn't have mm-hmm. any kids and they have the ability to just fly in and see one another like at a moment's notice after a show so i, I kind of think it's something else i don't know kate i've seen some crazier storylines in hollywood with people <laughs> maybe faking r- breakups just to get the headlines because it worked everyone's talking about them yeah they true. did put out That's some true. Re- they did put out some nice quotes about each you know they spoke very highly of each other you know it was a nice way to end it because it seems like it was genuine and i hope mm-hmm. it wasn't a publicist writing it i hope it was them actually writing it so that was very nice and sweet Again, I, I, I thought this was going to end a different way. I thought this one was going to end in some sort of marriage or maybe Chelsea's not against, you know, Chelsea might not be for marriage. Or maybe she, you know what, based on, she always wrote about in her books about how her, how bad it was growing up with her parents. But maybe this was going to end differently, this relationship. And I think it was going to be marriage. But again, I'm so super surprised, but I'm not counting it out yet. Yeah, me neither. All right, number eight. Let's get going. Number eight, Justin Bieber going back on his world tour. So AEG presents tweeted that he is now going to be resuming his world tour that had kind of stopped back in February. If you remember, he was uh, he was diagnosed with that Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which had left him with face paralysis. He talked about that. Well, that that story went crazy viral. Everyone's talking about it. Well, he is now ready to be back on stage. It sounds like July 31st, he will uh, be doing a couple of European festivals and then continue to South America, uh, South Africa, the Middle East, Australia, Asia, New Zealand. I mean, he's going everywhere. Um, so things must be better with the face paralysis. I, I got to imagine. Have you ever gone down the rabbit hole and r- looked up that syndrome and what ha- can happen? No. There, you can get blisters all over your face. It's gnarly. I'm really. I was just really surprised to, to see how bad it can be. So it'll be interesting to see if he continues with throughout the tour or if it flares up. Um, it's gnarly. Yeah, I, I know literally nothing about Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Nothing. So is it something that it's like 
you get and then it starts to get better or you're dealing with it for the rest of your life any clue it says that it's a virus that's connected to the her to herpes so mm-hmm. f- for, for whatever reason someone may get that um and and that it it does have tendency to flare up but it says that you can take medication to get rid of it i think it's one of those things you have to catch it early but if mm-hmm. it's not taken care of like i saw a picture of a few people who had blisters that it's scabbed over it looks really really painful yikes yeah adam will you go see his concert i i would i go pay for it no someone gave me free tickets yes (laughs) (laughs) i think that's where i'm at with all concerts though like i'm not gonna pay to go to a concert i mean i think that's where i'm at in my career i'm fortunate enough that i I get a once in a blue moon. I get a, a few free tickets every now and then, but I don't think I'd pay to go see it. But I enjoy going to see him. But the problem is when you see a concert like Justin Bieber, I, th- from, I again I've never seen him perform live. But you see like Bruce Springsteen. This is two and a half hours. And when I from what I understand from like these kind of concerts, wow. it's usually like an hour, an hour and a half. I'm like, oh, that's it. Like I yeah. want like a Bruce. I'm expecting like a Dave Matthews band where it's two and a half hours. Just you know, Bruce Springsteen two and a half hours. I'd be really disappointed just seeing an hour and a half. But, you know, I if someone gave me free tickets, I would go and I'd probably enjoy it. I, I, I would enjoy it. I mean, I'm same boat when you said it. Like, I wouldn't pay for a ticket. 100%. But I would, I would go and I would be dancing and I'd have a great time. All right. Number seven. You guys heard Kodak Black got arrested and they found 31 oxycodone pills on him. So that was a big deal. Well, apparently he has a, a prescription for him. So it's all good. Uh, He's been dealing with a lot of pain because he, you know, he got shot back in February during a scuffle in L.A. uh, during like the Super Bowl weekend. Well, that on top of when he went to, was it prison or jail? I think it was federal prison. Um, He was assaulted by guards, uh, apparently. And during that time, he was really roughed up, hurt, had a lot of residual pain. So he is saying the, the oxy that you guys found, I am allowed to have, which... I kind of like that story. <laughs> He's like, look, guards rough me up. I'm still dealing with pain. I got shot. Like, leave me the hell alone. It's going to be interesting how this plays out. You know, yes, he, his lawyer saying he uh, they handed over proof. Question is, you know, I want to see the proof that he was prescribed that during. That's what they have. Yeah, they no, have, they, ha- they have the proof. Prescription. I, they, and I want to see the date it was. Uh, they're probably going to talk to the doctor and say, you know, what's the, did he come to see you or was this an over the phone prescription? Cause it is a serious, um, over the counter prescription. Um, it's, mm-hmm. I'm curious how this plays out, but it was definitely, um, I mean, when you heard that Kodak got arrested, this was, he's, this is not the first time this guy's run into trouble. So you're like, Oh, another time. Like, well, that, that's, I think that's what I like about the story is because I'm like, you felt like the cops were like, haha, we found Oxy on you. You're screwed. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm allowed to have these. That's what I liked about the story. It yeah. was like, plot twist. Kate, have you ever, have you ever done like, Oxy? Had no. Oxy for <laughs> any type of surgery or anything? No. I have. And I've had five no. children. No, I've never. But I have to think that if you are, were at some point in your life shot, you would need Oxy. Like, how does one recover from that? How long does it take to recover? I mean, Ugh, this sounds awful. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say I, I never want to experience being no. shot and have to use Oxy. Terrible. Oh, he, he, what a wild life. All right. I'm not going to dwell on that one too much. Let's move on. To number uh, six. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. What is it? Adam? Number six. Number six. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry spotted out in New York. I am, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say I'm, I'm actually kind of annoyed with this story. Me too. Because... Why the hell do people shit all over Meghan Markle at every moment they have? I do not understand it. Uh, the the headline of this article says Meghan Markle acted like a princess while dining in New York, and then they go on to do the whole story about how they were at uh, a really popular eatery out there called La Conde Verde, and they said that she asked for the private court indoor courtyard all to herself. If it's fifty people. But they wanted it to themselves, so they asked for it. There was a birthday party going on, so the restaurant couldn't do it. So they basically sat them in with everyone else. Okay. Then buried in the story is basically Meghan Markle goes up to a birthday party and tells the birthday 
person happy birthday uh, i hope you have a wonderful year they comment on some other people's fashion and how amazing they were in there i'm like why did they lead with she's acting like a princess when all she did was ask for some privacy because they are two of the most famous people in the world yeah 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 i don't agree with you and here's why i've waited tables before a 50 person patio when you take all of that away to let two people sit with their bodyguards you're you're missing out on income you're missing out on like a six top with the tip wine meals etc so if i'm a waiter i'm pissed off i'm pissed off but i i'm gonna rebuttal and say you and i have never been two of the most famous people in the entire world they're, and what they're it would not be really like though to be there and you're trying to eat and you don't got, go out in new york city you got 48 Sorry. people staring at you they while you're trying out. to eat spaghetti you're so, act, they're actually not the biggest celebrities in the whole world i'm sure the people of new york who see celebrities every day of their life actually don't care that much they no, can go inside them, and sit down if it, it, it would have been a better story if Meghan markle paid the waiters and the restaurant what 50 people would have spent for the time that they were at the restaurant so well, I have actually seen have. this table, by the way, where they where they were looking to go. I didn't, <laughs> actually didn't know it was in Le Conde Verde. The Le Conde Verde, the restaurant, is right next to the Greenwich Hotel, which a lot of celebrities stay at. It's a huge, probably the, the biggest celebrity hotspot in New York City. I thought the place where she's saying she wanted to see was actually part of the hotel. But it's a beautiful area. I can't be mad at her looking to sit in that area because it's super cool and nice. And, I mean, you just can't sit in this place anywhere else. So it's a beautiful room. I do have a quick story about La Conde Verde. This is about 10 years ago, probably a little bit more than that. I was working with my camera on the street and it was a Friday night. It was raining. It was dead. And I needed to get a shot. I got a tip that Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos were eating at this restaurant. I get to the restaurant. I could see them eating through the window. And this is like at 930 at night and I'm waiting for them to come out. All of a sudden, Jim Carrey shows up in an SUV with a girl and his bodyguard, and he's clearly on a date. I'm like, I was, the first time I ever saw Jim Carrey, I was starstruck. I'm like, oh my God, it's Jim Carrey. The bodyguard sees me. I don't even put my camera up. I'm like, oh my God, it's Jim Carrey. I'm in awe. I could see through the window. They sit right next to Mark and Kelly. And I'm not taking photos through the window. I'm just, I just saw them. I noticed it. So I'm hanging out for a little bit. Jim Carrey and his date get done quicker with their meal than Mark and Kelly. The bodyguard brings out the girl first separately because he saw me with my camera and I threw my camera in the bushes because I just wanted to get a photo with Jim Carrey. I was, I was starstruck. It's Jim Carrey. I throw my camera in the bushes. The girl comes out first. The bodyguard puts her in the car. Jim comes out with the bodyguard now because they don't want to get the two shot. They're afraid I had my camera and they're afraid I was going to get a two shot. The bo Jim comes out and I go, Jim, can I get a photo? And Jim goes, sorry, man, I don't do photos. And he jumps in the car. And I'm like, ugh. Oh. And then he sees me stand there. It's raining outside. My ca mm. I'm, I don't have my camera in my hand. It's like hiding in the bush. So Jim's sitting in the car. He rolls down the window and goes, hey, man, I'm sorry. I don't want to do photos. I'm just not in the mood today, but I do want to meet you. My name's Jim. I go, Jim, my name's Adam. I'm sorry, man. I'm, you know, I, I, work, I worked at TMZ at the time. I, I was working for, I worked for TMZ. I was waiting for Kelly and Mark, but I saw you. I just wanted to meet you. I'm a huge fan. I never thought I'd meet you. He was nice. He was so nice we talked for about 20 minutes i felt bad oh, wow. he was on a date with this girl and he was talking about me he's like hey and i told him i do comedy he's like oh you do stand up where do you do it how's that oh, going nice. and we just started talking it was an unbelievable conversation we rapped where he shook my hand and that summer he lived on um jane street in new york city he had this art studio and this whole summer, I just kept running into him. I would see him outside painting and, you know, riding his bike. And we became friends for that whole summer. And I got to know him and got to go into his art studio. It was like my wow. summer of Jim Carrey. It was so cool. That's so cool. What I took away from that is his date must have sucked. Oh, my God. Because he totally. was more interested in you than the but date. Yeah, the that date. could be true. Wow. Unless he was but trying to impress the date. Cool, <laughs> he was trying to impress the girl. Okay, back to, this, back to the weekly stories. Number... Back to Meghan Markle. And I don't understand the hate. I just... I, I, I don't get it. I don't know why it's the cool thing to hate on Meghan Markle, but there we go. All right, let's move on. Number, what number are we on, Adam? Number five. Number five, Honey Boo Boo undergoing a 13,000 weight loss surgery uh, with her boyfriend. So this is an interesting story. You know, Honey Boo Boo has obviously dealt with weight issues her entire life. Yeah. We've seen her grow up on television. Um, she is now saying that she is going to go get um, a sleeve done 
It's thirteen thousand dollars. She reportedly weighs two hundred seventy-five pounds right now. She is. I don't remember how old. What is it like? Well, that she's article. S- now the oh, the article that I saw said she was thirteen, but apparently she's seventeen. But what's upsetting to me in this whole piece is that I think the boyfriend's twenty-one, and they announced their relationship a year ago. So we're talking about a sixteen-year-old and a twenty-year-old. That's weird too. There's whole there's okay. so many layers to the story that are upsetting. That is really weird. So she'll get this endoscopic sleeve. She says that, look, she just thinks it is genetic for her to gain weight and that this is the only way to lose the weight. I would beg to differ a little bit because I've seen her eat on TV for many, many years. And I don't I don't I think that she was she was not raised in the best um, yeah, circumstances. situation to have a, a healthy living style when she was younger. Yeah. But, At the end of the uh, day, though, Dax, the, you know, oof. this was the doctor is named in this story. So I think the oh. doctor went to her and said, listen, I'll either pay you or I'll just give Agreed. you a free surgery. Just, mm-hmm. at, you know, go public with the story. And that's what he did. So yep. the doctor got a free plug. I mean, it's only $13,000. $13,000 plug? Yeah. So it's he got tons of press over. He got tons of news. He went to her and said, listen, I'll give you the surgery. All you have to do. And I think the boyfriend you said is getting it too? Yeah. yeah I mean, come on. Well. The, the, where's the money coming from? So the doctor said, I'll give it yep. to you for free. You just need to go public with the story. And they say, okay, why not? Horrible. Wow. Good call. I didn't even notice that. All right, number four. This one we really got to dive into. Variety released the salaries of some of the highest paid people in TV and movie. Uh, You know what? I'm not going to read down everyone's. Uh, I know that you guys also saw this list, so maybe I'll call out a couple of my the ones that I saw that I thought were the craziest, and you guys can call out your favorite. Uh, However, okay, so the craziest one I saw on here was obviously Tom Cruise getting 100 million dollars plus for Top Gun 2. That blew my mind. I mean, I know he's a producer. I know that it did well. But damn, a hundred million dollars. That one surprised me. Mm-hmm. Um, Dwayne The Rock getting 22.5 million for Black Adam. That's wild. Mm-hmm. Any of the other ones surprised you guys on that list? Kevin Costner, 1.3 million for Yellowstone. Uh, me too. That was surprising. I uh, it was interesting to read more about how they're going be- going to more of a dynamic where there's one lead star that makes them all this money and not having like seven lead stars. It just makes you realize that I, I they're all competing for for viewers and mm-hmm. with so many channels and streamers available, it's just the whole climate is completely changing. Yeah, I- yeah. It did show you that again, women still are not making the money Mm -mm. in Hollywood. I think that was kind of the glaring bigger issue here. Like Mm -hmm. you see these men walking away with huge paychecks. I did, however, like to see there was a couple where the two leads, a male and a female lead, both were getting paid the the same. same. So Anne Hathaway, Jared Leto, both getting 750,000 per episode for Required Crashed. Harrison Ford, Helen Mirren, a million per episode for 1923. Mm -hmm. And then Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, both getting 12.5 million for Barbie. So, I, I felt like that was positive, but again, you look down the list, and it's all these men just getting ridiculous paid. Terrible, terrible um, men. How dare you? How do you guys sleep well, at night? It, You're it's disgusting. It's also like the, the same men, like Sylvester Stallone. Like, what? I don't know. Anne Hathaway, by the way, deserved every single penny of it, as did Jared Leto. Those two were so spectacular together in We Crash. They deserved all of it. So well Both done. equal pay, by the way. So that was kind of interesting to you, see. Yeah. You know, the other thing I thought about was Elizabeth Olsen, her paycheck on here for 875000 yeah. per episode per for episode. Love and Death. And what I laughed about was she's still the poor Olsen. Yes. Isn't <laughs> that true? <laughs> she is still the poorest Olsen sister. Wow. All right. And then, guys, if you want to see more on. of this list, you could go on our Instagram, Hollywood Raw Pod. Uh, we have the whole list on there. Um, and there's tons of names. You want to see how much they're getting paid per episode from Seth Rogen, Natasha Leone, Elizabeth Moss, Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, David Harbour, uh, Jason Sudeikis, and more. It's on our Instagram, Hollywood Raw Pod. All right, Dex, what is number three? Number three, Ricky Martin getting a big old win in uh, in this court case. You know, this news has been making massive headlines 
Basically, this is his nephew who accused him of having a sexual relationship with him and then harassing him afterwards. And this, the, the nephew is a 21-year-old. We can tell you yesterday morning, Ricky Martin won that case against him. They showed up to court. Ricky was on Zoom. His legal team told TMZ just as they anticipated. The temporary protection order was not extended, and the accuser confirmed to the court that his decision to dismiss the matter was his alone without any outside influence mm -hmm. or pressure. Uh, so this is a big win for Ricky and his team because they were basically saying there was never a sexual relationship between Ricky and his nephew. This was just a case of um, someone who had some mental issues right. and were using that to their and using Ricky's name to their advant advantage. Mm -hmm. It's a wild case, it wild to, story. It, seem, it seemed to me that it was a, a case of mental health issues from the beginning. Very sad. Mm -hmm. Well, it sucks. So like. For Ricky, like, your name gets dragged down so hard, so quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, like, again, yes, Ricky just won, but there's a lot of people out there that heard the story that didn't hear the final conclusion or will never hear the Absolutely. final conclusion. Yeah. And so for them, they're just going to go, oh, Ricky Martin had sex with his nephew. Like, that's right. forever going to be in their ingrained in their minds. Well, also, did you watch Menudo Forever Young on HBO? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. No, you got to watch it because it's like about this boy band, which I've been obsessed with forever because they would swap out members when they turned 16. So imagine like new kids on the block having new members all the time as soon as anybody grew up. But Ricky Martin was one of those members and the band manager from Menudo was like Lou Pearlman and was uh, like sexually assaulting many of those members and sex trafficking them. And then Ricky Martin has gone on to create a, a foundation that works with sex trafficking. So if you look at the broad scope of what he's been through and what he's done with his life, you would have immediately known that this is not possible at all. And so it makes it even worse that it was a he was accused. Yeah. And his name was tarnished all over the world. Instantly, yes, because so. that's something he passionately fights every day. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, crazy. All okay. right, number two. Number two. Khloe uh, Kardashian apparently speaking out about um, uh, about this Tristan Thompson situation after he was spotted uh, holding hands with another woman right after the news of the surrogate baby on its way. Um, I'm not 100% sure that she's speaking out. I think she's posting on Instagram and people are latching onto that yeah. as she's speaking out. But she posted a photo of her and True, a bunch of photos of her and True in their bathing suits on tropical vacation. And it says, me and my best girl making the best memories. And then it said, I will forever have you, your back, my angel girl. How that is responding to <laughs> know. the other stuff, I don't understand. But mm -hmm. everyone assumed that that was her response. Yeah, it was a reach, a little bit of a reach. A, a big reach. Um, my thoughts on this is they aren't together. They haven't been together for months and months and months. I mean, this the surrogacy started happening mm -hmm. back at the end of last year. So, you know, we're going on almost eight months here. So I guess he should be allowed to go hang out with a woman in Puerto Rico and hold hands and walk around, right? Yeah, who cares? I think she's moved yeah. on anyway. Does does anybody know the identity of the guy that she's dating now? They say he works in private equity. That would be a good guy I mean, for her. I don't, but that, I would love I know, to see I that. I agree. Me too. I would love to she see needs, them with a normal she needs person. a guy who is not mm -hmm. famous, mm -hmm. not just to just to have a dose of like normal I agree. normal life for her. Like mm -hmm. someone needs to just stop messing with her emotions. Like she just yeah. she picks the wrong guy over and over and over again. And guys that clearly just don't care about her feelings or have any respect for the relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I All agree. right, Dax, the number one story of the week. Number one story of the week. We now can call her Jennifer Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> so Jennifer Lopez, she filed for a name change. She is now Jennifer Lynn Affleck. Um, but that... Let's be realistic. That is what her legal name yeah. will be moving forward. But right. we will all continue to call her Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo, whatever. That will not change. Um, but it did turn into a massive story. She's been planning to ch change her name for the last 20 years. When they were engaged the first time, I remember she had done some interviews. She had said, yes, I will absolutely take his last name. And so she is now following through with that. She took his last name legally. Why it's doesn't she just go by Jaffleck, like J apostrophe Affleck? <laughs> Jaffleck. 
<laughs> now you know you guys know I feel like I'm responsible for those two getting together. Or why is that? Because when uh, the Southern Charm reunion aired and Craig said to Madison, you know, uh, you broke up, a, you tried to break up a marriage with an ex MLB baseball player. So the next Monday, I interviewed Danny Baird from the show, and I asked her. What about these rumors? And then just threw out a name. I said, well, what do you think about people saying it's A-Rod? And she goes, well, I knew about it because she talked about it. I was like, oh, my God, it is A-Rod. So then it aired and then the story broke. And then it became such a big story that I think she couldn't run away from the fact that he had been a serial cheater. So then she ended up getting back with Ben Affleck. So I would like a gift. Man, we've had... (laughs) Both people responsible for this relationship <laughs> on this week. We actually had Craig on uh, Craig's Wednesday's part of it episode. too. The two of us. Yeah. yeah, the two of you. Your 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 powers combined equaled mm-hmm. Benefer Part Two. I know that that's awesome. Yeah, Craig. We asked Craig kind of the same <laughs> question. You know, a lot of people are crediting him for them getting back together. What were his thoughts on it? And he was like, "Listen, I think I had more to do with it than I than I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, but if they're happy, I'm happy for them. So this is hilarious." Thank you for your, your contribution you're welcome. You're welcome. to the world of Benefer. I, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, for people who don't know your podcast and want to check out your podcast, what does it cover? I mean, when I say reality life, what is your scope of reality? Unscripted television. So three times a week I cover docuseries, documentary, and reality shows. And I interview the talent and the people behind it, the directors, the producers. So whatever is going on that week, I'm covering it. In one episode, I tell you what to watch. In the other two episodes, it's interviews with the people behind those reality shows and documentaries. And I, you always walk away going, I have so much homework, so many things to watch. I always give you things to watch. And I know this is a horrible question, but who has been your favorite guest on your show? And I hate when people ask me that. I know. No, so um, many. But I want to just give them a taste of the kind of guests that you're getting on your show. Um, I love people like Craig from Southern Charm, but I also have interviewed Marcus Limonis from The Prophet. I interviewed Amanda Knox. That was one of my favorite interviews. So it's a little bit of everything. And I think it really represents the people that we know and the people we hang out with who can watch everything from true crime to Love Island. You know, it, we don't all just watch reality shows or documentaries. It's a little bit of everything. So um, I, I'm certain that if there's something like Tinder Swindler, or what, anything that's big in TV that you've watched, I probably interviewed somebody that's featured or who created it. I, I think everyone has a passion and love for reality TV as much mm-hmm. as you don't want to. They don't want to admit it. it or yeah. admit it. Like I remember Jennifer Lopez loving Mob Wives. And yeah. That made me laugh <laughs> yeah. so hard just to think that she was obsessed with Mob Wives. Yeah. But uh, Kate, thank you so much. If anyone who wants to check out her podcast, go search Reality Life with Kate Casey uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Adam, why don't you lead us out, sir? Yeah, you can find us. Make sure you follow the Hollywood Raw podcast on Instagram at Hollywood Raw Pod. We're also on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, on it all. We also got a private Facebook page where we have to uh, approve you to get in, but we kind of break the stories before they come out and see it in all the news outlets. and it's uh, well, if you were joining. go to go to go to Hollywood Raw, and then uh, when you're on our Facebook page on Hollywood Raw, you'll see the private one called Off the Record. Yeah, Ooh, we can't join it. It's I'm we joining. give a yeah, lot of good tea out there. Um, so good. make sure you follow us on Facebook. Follow me at, at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at D A X H O L T. Dax Holt. We'll see you guys next time. Guys, hope you like that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best you do support us is really doing that, and uh, we really need the money because. Need hair gel. <laughs>